Stan Jubilisco here, proprietor and operator of the website sciencewriter.net, and also of amateur radio station W1GV, Whiskey One Golf Victor. What I'd like to talk about here is the basic concept of, it's a very old concept, but you'll still find these things around today, a grounded grid, radio frequency, power amplifier. And what exactly is that? Well, it's exactly what its name implies. Normally when you want to build an amplifier circuit with a vacuum tube, and I'm getting <clears throat> a little bit old-fashioned for some of you, but then again for some of you uh, maybe it's kind of a reminiscence. Here's the basic symbol for a vacuum tube. Those of you who know this will know what I'm talking about, and those of you who don't, I guess you'll have to study up on if you really think it's worth your while anymore. But uh, this is the cathode right here, this electrode right there. That's the cathode. Normally that's grounded. This is the grid. That's the control grid in a triode vacuum tube. Triode meaning that it has three elements. That's the control grid. Oftentimes, by the way, you will also see another element in a vacuum tube. Another grid called the screen grid. The screen grid helps to minimize the capacitance and interaction between the control grid and the anode or the plate. So here's what you have, the cathode, the grid or the control grid. Let me move that up here and I'll explain that. You'll see why in just a minute. Control grid right here and the anode also called the plate. Now the plate is normally where we take the output from in a circuit like this, oftentimes through a transformer to isolate the output from the load that ultimately it goes into, which would uh, generally be an antenna in the case of a ham radio, radio frequency power amplifier. This is the screen grid or just simply the screen. It goes generally through a resistor to a positive voltage source. And then this plate goes through a transformer of some kind or another to a positive voltage source. The cathode can be grounded and the input signal can go. So in other words, we would ground the cathode and put the input into the control grid. And that will provide a lot of gain for most amplifiers. But it's also somewhat unstable. So what you might want to do instead is ground the grid directly. And then apply your input through a transformer like this to the cathode. This is called a grounded grid radio frequency power amplifier. When you do this, you get basically the same effect as you would if you applied the signal to the control grid, but you get less gain and greater stability. By stability, I mean that you're less likely to see feedback occur which could produce unwanted oscillation. <clears throat> In many cases, you can operate a circuit like this, applying the input signal to the cathode, and you can <clears throat> run basically in terms of direct current the cathode at the same potential as the control grid. That state of affairs is called zero bias.
because the bias voltage between the control grid and the cathode is zero. <clears throat> but the alternating current signal, of course, that comes in, the radio frequency signal that comes in, definitely produces more than just zero bias on an instantaneous basis. Let me, for the moment, just do away with this screen grid for simplicity and, in addition, simplify or, or exemplify the output circuit. There's your positive high voltage. Sometimes in some amplifiers, high power uh, ham radio linear amplifiers, this might be as much as 3,000 volts DC. You can get a pretty good shock off of 3,000 volts. I got a 3,700 volt shock off an old, old amplifier at the University of Minnesota where they had ham radio station W0YC. I believe it's still there, the Gopher Radio Club. They had this old uh, tube, and I don't remember what it was, a pair of 813s or something like that. They had 3,700 volts, and the um, insulation on the plate supply lead was a little bit cracked, and it managed to go through my right hand between the thumb and the index finger. I still have the scar more than 40 years later, or about 40 years later. It was like a firecracker going off in my hand. Well, suffice it to say that if I had been touching something else with my left hand, like the ground, I would probably not be here doing this video today. You get your RF output here, and you'll probably have some kind of a tuned circuit here. With a variable capacitor, which you tune until the plate current takes a nosedive. It dips, indicating resonance and maximum output. Remember that, where you used to have a tuning control and, and sometimes also a loading control, and you would have to dip the plate current? Remember that? Well, that's how these things work, and this is the basic concept behind a grounded grid uh, radio frequency power amplifier. And in fact, one of the more common tubes still used today, I believe, for this purpose is the old 3-500Z. It's a big old thing, and I remember having a wonderful amplifier when I lived uh, with some people working at ARRL headquarters called the Drake L4B. There are probably still a few of those around. So this is the concept behind a very common and efficient and well-proven high-frequency power amplifier, the grounded grid amplifier. And I might, I believe that the <coughs> 3-500Z is a tetrode, meaning it has four elements, the cathode, the control grid, the screen grid, and the plate. It might be a pentode, you know, I really don't remember. But I do remember that it was one heck of a rugged tube. And two of them in parallel, you could put a brick on the key, as they say, and go have lunch and come back and that thing would still be running. Of course, you'd use a dummy load for that purpose. You wouldn't do that over the air, would you? Stan Jibalisco, ham radio operator, of the station W1GV, Whiskey One Golf Victor. Listen for me on 20 meters, CW, or phase shift keying, and also on the bands above 20 meters, all the way up to, if it ever opens up, 6 meters. 73, which means best regards. Until next time, so long.